Here we go. Yes. Taxi, taxi. Oh, taxi. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a trance track from scratch. I've got to be honest, I really enjoyed this. This was the most fun I've had in a long time. And thank you so much for voting for it last week in the EDM Tips community. We are going to be creating those trance beats and rolling bass line. Those epic chords. The synth riffs. Selecting vocals, mixing, effect, and some arrangement too. Before we get stuck in, I want to say a huge shout out to our Accelerator student, David, who got supported by Paul Van Dyke last week. You can check out his music below this video. And as usual, you can also download this project file, all the samples and presets completely free below this video too. Right, without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, first thing we need to do is set the tempo. Let's set it to 140 BPM and get a big fat kick on there. Easiest thing to do for a kick is have a favorite selection, but today I'm gonna to use the F9 Audio Argon Kicks that James Wiltshire sent over to me. I do recommend you check them out. I'm not sponsored by them, but it's a fantastic pack. So let's go there and grab some kicks. I'm gonna do sample packs. Do, 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 do. That's a nice fat meaty one. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Who'd have thought, hey? Now we need to get that bouncing trance bass in there. So I'm gonna create everything, as I said, in Ableton Live plugins. So let's just get a normal wavetable and let's write it in B. And we're just gonna have this bounce in between each kick, like so. Okay, I'm gonna tweak this a little bit. I don't want there to be any release. So I want each bass note to just stop as soon as that MIDI note stops. And I'm gonna add a saw bass and a sub bass. In fact, now I'm gonna double this up and we're gonna have a sub bass track and that is gonna allow us to add some more stereo width to this main bass without running into phase cancellation issues. So let's take out the low end of that main bass. And then we've just got our sub bass and nice sine wave. And we'll get rid of that click by putting on a high pass filter, a low pass filter rather. We need to name this bad boy, don't we? Trance, trance would be a fine thing. Well, this is kind of based on Paul Van Dyke style. So what I'm gonna call this is Paul Van Dyke, water stopped by Dyke. Hello darkness, my old friend. Let's do it, all together. Let's add some stereo width to that mid bass. Nice, fat baby. Okay, magic list, what do you tell me next? Wiggle bass is next. So this is gonna be another bass. We're gonna have a few bass lines in this track and we are gonna call this wiggle bass. God only knows why, because I don't. And we are going to make this go da -ba 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 on an octave and that's gonna give some real trancey groove and you're gonna start hearing the kind of benefits of this in a second. So let's just chuck on another wavetable and then just program in on the 16th, like so. But we don't want this clashing with our main bass. So what we're gonna do is filter out the low end and just go for a kind of saw bass, kind of plucky sound. So let's first get the ADSR shape right. Set it to mono so we don't have all the bass notes bleeding over each other and then dial in these plucky settings. Plucky little fella. There we go. Easy peasy, putting in pie. But I want a little bit more character this, so I'm actually going to plug in a bit of a filter envelope as well, so it's gonna close down over time. Like so. It's gonna give it that plucky feel. And now with everything, and we'll take out the low end from that as well. Let's have a listen. Now it sounds a little bit weird at the moment because it's kind of fighting with the bass. So now we're going to bring in some sidechain compression, which we're going to use throughout this track. So the way I'm going to do that is use a compressor, unsurprisingly, because it's sidechain compression. And I'm going to call this SC pump because it's giving that pumping effect. I'm going to open up that side button there, take the sidechain input from my SC channel, AKA the sidechain channel. And that's just a silent tick 
that you can't hear because I've set the routing to sends only and it's just going to be used for triggering this sidechain compression. So let's dial some in and see what happens. Bring the threshold down. So we can hear it's just adding some movement. We're going to add that to the main bass as well. Although we probably don't need it because of the way it's programmed in, but let's just do that anyway. Base and color it dark yellow, dark yellow, orange. All together. Let's add some more low end back into this. A little bit. Maybe I'll take it down an octave, add some unison, go crazy. another oscillator yes okay that's cool next thing we need to do is add some drums into this that's going to really help with the groove of the track so I mean come on guys it's trance what do you need you need a clap or a snare some hi-hats so let's go and get a clap I'm gonna go for I could go for a normal 909 clap I want something like that that's really kind of really, you know, crisp and clear. So let's just chuck one of those in there and have a look. Okay, there's quite a lot of transients there because it's like several people clapping at once, like some crazy computer clapaholic clapasaurus rex. So much like this. So we're going to take off some of those transients. So we're just starting that sample from further on in the sample like that. I want to get rid of some of that reverb. So let's just tighten this up a bit, do a bit of a fade out, and then we are going to add our own room reverb in a second. Cool. First things first, though, let's program this bad boy in. Every other clap, every other kick, even, like so. Take it down a little bit. I'm going to actually make this kick a little bit quieter. No, I'm not. Only joking. <laughs> And we want to get these levels a bit better because they're not really sounding right at the moment. So first let's get that kick and clap, add a little bit of room reverb. Nice, giving it some space. Bring in the bass. I think we need another octave on this, so let's take it down. Okay, that's sounding cool. Next thing we need to do is have an open hat in between each of these. But first I wanna tell you how I got that room reverb on the clap. So in the drum rack, if you open up the routing and press this S and R button, you can right click and create return chain. Now what you can then do is select one of your global auxiliary channels that you may have created beforehand. And I selected the room reverb. And that means that I can feed just a little bit of room reverb into whatever elements I want, whatever the heck I want. So that's what I've done. Once you've done that, you just close down the routing, keep S on though, and you can just feed a little bit of that clap in. But enough of that, let's get a hat in there, an open hat and a closed hat. So again, I want something really bright and modern sounding, so we're going for that modern. I like this one. But I'm gonna set it so that it stops as soon as the MIDI note finishes, and I'm doing that by taking release down to zero. Now let's program it in. Now there's a lot of low end in that that I can hear, so we're going to have to put some EQ on it. Um, but let's just program it in first, and then have a look at that EQ. Let me know if you're enjoying this so far, guys. Give me a hell yeah or an amen, brother. If you're feeling holy, I'm not drunk. Not nearly drunk enough, anyway. Add a little bit of room reverb to tie it together. Nice. Now we're cooking with gas. But we want to get that closed hat in there, adding that groove. So let's get that 16th hat there. That is how they sound. Ah, let's use a 808 closed hat. And this is quite a quiet sample, so I'm just going to boost it up in volume. And then let's just program it in every 16th. 
But this is going to sound a bit like vanilla and robotic, so we're going to have to use one of these sidechain compressors just on the hats to give them some more movement. Because listen to this. We need a BBE nine days, seven weeks, or whatever it was called, extra clap there. So I'm going to program that in there. But let's add some of that movement now to these hats. So I'm just going to grab and copy and paste this sidechain compressor that we've created already. Just paste it just after the hat, not after all the drums. And now let's listen to those closed hats. So this is where we were. Boring. And now let's listen to where we are. Oh, that's amazing. The level of movement in that, my mind has been blown, literally blown. Okay, before we add some more drums, I wanna get some more melodic content into this. So we wanna create a synth riff because that's really going to carry the whole track. Let's call this synth riff. Again, I'm gonna create this using wavetable, which means we have to color it cyan, which is the natural color of synths. And the irony is, even if we weren't using wavetable and it was a synth, it would still need to be cyan for obvious reasons. So let's go wavetable. Most important thing to do here is actually load it onto the right track. Second most important thing to do here is create a syncopated rhythm, again on 16ths, around the root of the track, which is going to give us some absolute feels. This is the beginning of feels, all right? This is like feels 1.0. We're going to get to feels 2.0 later, and maybe even feels 2.1. We'll see how we feel, ironically. So... Let's just program in on these 16th, dancing around the beats. In fact, to make this easier, because I'm kind like that, let's press scale, hit B, because this is in the scale of B minor, and then we're gonna hit this scale button. Now we can just play around within this template and we can't really hit a wrong note. I quite like that. Let's just duplicate it, like so. And let's have a listen. Okay, let's actually make that sound not rubbish. And the way that we're going to do that is not delete it. And then we are going to add some high-end frequencies to that, some harmonics. So firstly, let's get the shape more or less right. We want this really short and plucky as well. Uh, so let's do that. Cool. Animals. Boop, 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 boop. And now let's add some filter envelope to that. So we're going to go back to the matrix, hit that, hit this, hit that. and shape this envelope a bit. Cool, kind of like the other sounds. And now let's add some extra movement to this. So we're gonna add a second oscillator and just choose some more interesting sounds, basically. You could cycle through the presets and I always recommend that to start with, but I wanted to create everything from scratch. So that's why I'm doing it now. Um, That kind of sounds cool, but we want some more movement to this as well. So I'm going to assign this wavetable position to this same envelope, and that's just going to add some more movement. Let's experiment with this. Some nice character in that. Cool, that sounds pretty good. Let's add some unison. That's got some character. Let's just change the shape slightly. Now we're cooking with gas. That's my saying of the day, take up the low end. And then add some reverb and some delay. So I'm gonna create a delay specifically for this on the auxiliary channels. We are going to call this Riff Dell, unsurprisingly, and we're going to keep it color coordinated. So boom, let's do it. Let's get a delay on there. 
and then feed some of it in, 100% wet so we don't have the dry signal doubled up. Job done. Track's finished, mate. And let's feed in some of this room reverb. Oh, I like that. It's nice. Good job, really, as I'm making it. Yes! All right, let's get a sidechain pump on there. And then whack in everything else in the mix. Maybe tone that down a bit. Tone it down a bit, mate. We want to make this sound even bigger though. Is that possible? Yeah, it is actually. So I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to add some saturation up in here. Up in this. Before the EQ so we can take up the low end. And that's going to add some more harmonics, which is going to fatten out the sound. But I actually want to add some hall reverb to this as well, that's lasting a bit longer. So I've got a second auxiliary channel with just a longer delay, or decay, sorry, on the reverb. Let's have a listen to it. Bit too long. In fact, I want to make even more interest and movement to this. So I'm going to go into something that we did on the live group call yesterday in my accelerator program, and we are going to go for a bit of a phaser flanger effect on the reverb. So just a little bit, just a touch, just a little cheeky little touch. And we can also add a bit of sidechain compression to that reverb so it doesn't get too overwhelming. Add some more reverb on the clap, I think. Nice. Okay, where are we now? We are on the chord progression. This is like the Mac Daddy of things that you have in a trance track. We already know what the key of the track is in. It's B minor, because we decided that. So now let's change these bass notes and draw out a chord progression. First, I'm just going to work with the main bass. It's going to be easier. And I'll turn off the sub bass so we can hear what we're doing. So. Uh, we can hit that scale button. It's going to make things easier as well. B minor. And then every note that we hit is going to be within that scale. I might start on that one though. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So I've written the chord progression. Now we need to actually build the chords out for it. So this is what it sounds like when we've got the synth riff over the top and the wiggle bass, of course. That little wiggler, it almost wiggled out, didn't it? But we spotted it and we nipped it in the bud. We need that to follow these bass notes too, otherwise it's going to sound slightly discordant. So the first has to go down. I think it's this. And this last one's probably going to be a bit low if we go to the F sharp. Uh, what happened there? Taxi. Ah, I hit the wrong note. That'll do it. Sub bass. Yes, tune, but we need the chord progression because that's really going to make it. I mean, they're the bass notes of the chord progression. They're all fine and well, but let's get some big saw chords in there because it's a freaking trance track, all right? So let's create those. I might extend these chord progressions to be twice as long for each chord because it kind of feels like it might be changing a bit quick for trance, and that's fine, but let's first work out these notes. So we're just going to copy the bass notes in from here. So that's G, A, B, and F sharp. 
Again, to make things easy, we're going to hit B minor, scale, easy. We best get a sound on there. It's going to be really hard to hear those chords if there isn't actually anything playing them. That's top tip of the day. Right, this one. Oh, there's so much I've still got to show you on this. Okay, now let's get those chord notes in. A saw, because it's going to be a big super saw sound. Big sustained chords. Bah. Uh, let's just draw them in. I'm going to skip a note each time in the scale mode, and it's going to allow me to draw in these chords. Like so, skip a note. I'm going to go 7th and up to a ninth because I'm... No, I'll go to ninths in a bit. Ow! Okay, let's take these down an octave because this is really hurting my ears. And then we'll add the ninth. Again, just skipping a note each time. And these are chord inversions I've done here, just to bring those notes a bit closer together. The fact that these chords share notes a lot of the time is going to make them sound kind of smoother and cohesive. So this is what we've got at the moment. Let's add some unison, because this ain't nearly fat enough. Okay, I think these chords are changing too slowly. So what I'm going to do is just double up the length of this progression. And the way I'm going to do that is thus. There's probably a quicker way I could do it, but this is the way I'm doing it. I'm basically going to delete those, make that twice as long, move them over. Go on, get over there, cheeky little, cheeky little chaps. Boom. Make this one twice as long. Move them over. I know I could grab the MIDI notes and stretch them out, but this is almost as quick, and it's just done then, isn't it? Uh, synth riff, we might tweak that up as the chord progression changes to make things a little bit more interesting. Again, with this bass line, wiggle bass, we have to do it. We have to make this progression twice as long. You can fast forward this bit, actually. Okay, we've extended it. Lovely job. So let's have a listen so far. Add some reverb to that saw. So nice. Okay, let's add some sidechain bounce to that. And then we are going to be doing some arrangement really, really soon, but we want to add some extra movement to this. Um, we will be bringing that sidechain over. So it's now sounding like this so far. I want to change that loop at the end, that little riff. That's nice, isn't it? So it changes at the end, just a little bit more chest. Oh, so nice. Okay, next thing we need to do is add a little bit of a an extra layer in there. So let's just work out that we're making a drop. The drop's going to hit and it's just going to stick on that first note. And what we want to do is add another layer. So we're going to go into the bass and create like a buzz bass. So let's just add this buzz bass and then we'll boys bass have a sip of tea very important get the wavetable in there and we just want like a sound that implies bass just a mere implication of bass and the way that we're going to do that is by basically filtering out the low end but first let's get a grungy saw wave on there take it down Take 
take off the attack, full sustain, like that. Let's get a slightly grungier sound. Oh. Next I'm going to group that and this is an important trick because rather than creating stereo width with a stereo widener, I want extra control over it because I'm like a control freak when it comes to bass. So let's duplicate that wavetable, pan one left and one right, and at the moment it's just going to sound like mono because they're both exactly the same. But when we start changing one of these wavetables slightly, we'll get a stereo sound because the left and right channels are different. Now it's good to sum to mono with a mono switch like I've got on the master channel. So I can hear if it still sounds good. Still sounds good to me. Cool. So now let's get rid of those low frequencies because we don't want it clashing with our main bass. And now we're just going to program in a cool little riff to happen on this drop. Uh, let's turn everything else off because it's kind of a bit confusing. We'll just go for the kick and the bass. And turn off the reverb. Bum, 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 bum. Now, I think that the sidechain pump on this might be a bit hard, so... Cool. Let's just repeat that. So our drop's going to sound fat as with those different basses. Let's just add a little bit of an extra rhythmic frisson. we we'll just do it on the second one, actually. So with the bass sounds that we've got. We could actually add some reverb to this. Again, I'm going to add some bass reverb. It's going to be quite long, actually. All the low end taken off, and then I'm going to bounce it with that sidechain compressor as well. And it's going to sound cool. Yes. Oh, I'm absolutely loving this. I've got so much more to show you though. This is like Christmas come early. Now let's bring that synth riff back in. I'm gonna have to turn this down because it's getting a bit loud for my ears. I think I know what we need. We need some more interesting drums. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some, a tonal percussion that's going to tie the drums to the key of the track. Now the way I'm going to do that is look for a cowbell, but I want a classic cowbell sound, um, an 808 cowbell. There we go. So we're going to bring this in and we want this to be tuned to a B, not, not, the, not the kind of animal, obviously. Uh, the note on the musical keyboard. So now let's put this... Let's just put it on every third kick. One, two, three. So it's going to be quite subtle. But it's just going to add that extra little nuance. And we'll add, keep adding that too. There we go. And we could add some kind of bongos if we source a loop. But actually, I think this is working quite well. It's allowing our mix to be nice and loud because we don't have loads of stuff going on in the drum section. So instead, I'm just going to add some interest to this closed hat by adding some auto pan and filtering out some of that low end. And boosting the high end. Also pan. 
Now that's also filter well. <sighs> Unbelievable. So now our hats are going to be panning, like so. Oops. Excellent. Okay, last um, drum that we want to add is a ride cymbal to give it that really high-end sizzle. I know I'm going kind of in depth on this, but you know, I feel like it. That's a nice classic ride sound. But we don't want them bleeding in for too long, so we're again going to take that sustain up and everything else down. And then we're going to put this on every eighth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. And we're going to take out the low end, low end, and we're going to have this quite low in the mix, like quite quiet. So let's just bring it up until we've got a nice sizzle. Add some side chain bounce to that, I think, a little bit. Just copy and paste that compressor, like so. I want that buzz bass to be differing more and sound wider. So this is what I'm going to do. Yes! It's not trance if it doesn't sound like there's some kind of danger alarm occurring. So now, thankfully, we've got that. We can we can rest assured that the rest of the track will go swimmingly, and this will probably be the um, best track ever written. Okay, I revoked that last statement. This is going to be the second best track ever written. But before we get to why that's the case, let's build this extra sound that I've wanted to put in there for ages. It's going to be based on the buzz bass, like so. But it's going to just be what occurs not on the drop. So we're going to save this out here for the break. And all that we're going to do to make this different is add some filtered movement to it. So let's just get an auto filter on there. And that, this isn't something I often do in these tutorials. So I want to just give you an example. We're going to set this to a bandpass filter. Uh-oh, keyboard's running out of energy. Um, and then next thing we need to do is add some LFO to that. So the LFO is sweeping back and forth. Yes. That's Now we're getting into Trance Town. Trance Town... Arizona population this track now let's get a delay on there again we're just going to keep it for the bass I am don't half talk some nonsense today do I I'm excited it's the tea I tell you it's the tea right let's get that delay on there that cocaine barely touched the side see right let's do it Excellent. I do not condone the use of any Class A substances. I must tell you that. Very naughty. Let's get some let's get some beats in there and see how that sounds when it's all together. That sounds a bit better. Okay, next thing we need to do is create that epic, epic chord progression in the middle. So let's get back to that. And then we're going to do some arrangement. 
Let's just kind of close this all up. These are the main elements now. So now we need to get some vocals in there. Of course, we need some vocals. So I'm going to move this over. Um, let's do that. I didn't need to turn that off because we haven't actually got any automation yet. So Saw Wave, you are going to be the savior of this break. We are going to go, we're going to build into it like so. This will build down. It'll be going, oh, we need to go down. We need to go down. We need to go down. We'll be using automation. Don't worry. Don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about that, son. This will all go down. And then we are going to introduce this oh so tenderly, like so. Oh, okay. We, we're just going to arrange the shit out of this right now. Right now. As God is my witness, this is what's happening. So let's take this up. And we'll bring those vocals in. Oh, hello. Is this Feels 2.0 I feel coming? Yes? Yes, I think it might be. I need some vocals now for this track. Oh, for this track. Oh, I'd sing if I ever learnt, but I didn't, so I won't. Let's get some female vocals in there. Okay. Vocals. B minor. And let's just preview some of those. We're going for vibe more than anything. We can tweak the timing afterwards. We know it's going to be in the right key. So I'm just going to get my feels on. And uh, just indulge me if you wouldn't mind. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Do you make. No, I've heard you so many times now. Keep me high up. I fight them. That sounded like the Martians. This is not a Martian track. Okay, let's just loop this and get some more feels. All right, female vocals. We're going to keep that one for a little while, though. I'm struggling, so I'm just going to search for some more. Okay, I got my feels on. I found some vocals. I haven't dropped them in it because I want to show you how to warp them. So let's just have a listen to them as we loop this. And then we'll drag them in. Uh, so we should go to recently added. I got this one. Nice, okay. This is 138 BPM. We can see that because it's written here. So all we need to do is go in here unwarp it, warp it, and make sure it's set to 138 BPM. Now our track's 140, so this is perfect because, well, it's not perfect, it's like within 2 BPM, so that's fine. If we select that to Complex Pro, it should now sound really good mixed with the track. So let's bring in these vocals and see what we can do. We might add some effects at the same time. After I color this purple, the natural color of vocals, because the throat, inside of the throat, is purple. Do I dare to find? Let's add some the reverb. That you try to hide. Left unspoken. Do I dare to find the stories that you keep inside? Left unspoken. Right now we're gonna get really epic. I'm just doing this completely on the fly, guys. I wanted to do some arrangement. Here we are going to create a, yet another bass. So there's a lesson for you. Bass often comes in many shapes and sizes. And in a trance track, you might have a break bass, which is going to be like a sustained reese bass at the moment. This is really, I'm giving away loads of cool tips on this. So we're gonna create this sustained reese bass. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna add unison. Really detune it. Uh, 
and then we're just going to filter out the high end it's going to give us this cool re-space sound and now we're going to bring this in for these chords to epic it up epic it up break bass okay easiest thing to do is just copy the bass notes so that's this one and then paste that up here Oh, we need to drop it down, of course. Yes, but we want this to be hands in the air moment, so I might actually add another. I'm going to duck this reverb slightly from the dry vocals to let them cut through a bit more. No, I'm not because it's going to be ducking the reverb because I'm sharing the same hall reverb for this, so I'm not going to do that. Unspoken, unspoken, unspoken. Okay, we're going to just double up this saw wave here and take off the reverb. I'm going to take off the unison, I think, maybe not. And we're just going to have this operate on a higher level, on a higher level. This is going to be like a, an extra riff. Let's make that even higher. Okay, it might be getting a bit cheesy now. So what we're going to do is add these second vocals in and these other synth riffs. No, what's it called? The buzz bass that goes... And then let's get some build up in this. Build. Okay. I'm going to do this like rather than bouncing it out to another track, as in out to a send track, I'm just going to do this and do it manually. Manual delay, baby. Now with this, you could have the formants going up with the in the warp section, but I'm actually going to do this within the little altar boy instead. I know this isn't an Ableton plugin, but whatever. I mean, I'll just bounce this so you can still download it if you don't have it. But let's get that formant going up and just to add some movement like so. Okay, let's bring in that last vocal. I've kind of go, gone off a bit on one now, but you know, I get excited. So let's just add that extra vocal I bought. We got these send effects as well. Let's bring those in and just kind of add to the epicness. I have to warp that to 138, of course. Make sure every vocal that you bring in is warped correctly. That's better.
Right, let's actually arrange this now. So we're gonna, we've got our build up here and then we have to take it down. So all those would be automated down that I just did manually. Don't like this. Too cheesy. Let's let's run it through again. Trance up, baby. And now the build up. Okay, you need to imagine the rises and build ups. Okay, and now we've got this going on. Keep imagining. Right, now I want the, the bass to change here. And then so at this point right okay at this point we're going to take out the buzz and all of the drums are going to come in at this point so let's bring out the ride cymbals there that's when the groove's going to start so drop no, no claps, just the kick. Yes. Now the claps have come in. Yes, ooh, riser. Here we go. Yes! Unbroken. Absolute tunes. I'm f taxi. Taxi. Oh, taxi. All right. Oh, this is a tune. I think I might finish this. Let me know in the comments should I finish this tune. You can download this project file, all the samples completely free. Yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this as much as I did. If you want, to get your music sounding as good as possible, as quickly as possible, do check out my Accelerator program. As I said, one of our students got supported. Paul Van Dyke opened his set with this track last week. So this stuff does work. There's a method to it. And yeah, once again, thank you so much for joining. Smash like, subscribe. See you next time. Thinking of what video is gonna complement this one, made me think of my interview with the head of A&R of Anjuna Beats on how to get signed to Anjuna Beats. So you can check out that video there where I interview Adrian Armandaris. He talks about what they look for in an artist when it comes to releasing on some of the world's biggest labels. So check it out, like this video if you enjoyed it, and thank you so much for watching. Until then, cheers and happy producing. <laughs>